Welcome back to Switch Corner. Today we're going to be taking a look at the long dark on the Nintendo Switch. This one it's a first person survival experience that's more than a little ambitious in its scope. Full transparency here, I've actually played this one before over on the Xbox. I love the game there so now I'm just curious to see how performance really holds up on the Switch. So with that look hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here. Join our growing family and let's get started. It's a story and while it does include dedicated survival modes there is also a story known as Winter Mute, an episodic take on the formula. Don't worry here basically about things like permadeath you can save freely and on death you'll just be thrown back to that last checkpoint or save point. The story mode it's not for those looking for you know a pure survival permadeath scenario but for those out there that want a little story and like kind of survival mechanics while taking it a little easier on you. Though I will say here there is still three different difficulty options to really add the pressure should you want that. Here's story though, right now we're getting three episodes into a fight spoilers, I'm literally just going to summarise the opening moments. You take on the role of Will, a pilot, an old friend and what appears to be kind of like a, you know, old love interest comes back into your life, one Dr. Astrid Greenwood. She hires you to transport her to a remote location in the Canadian wilderness. Now after some bickering and discussion you basically get in your plane and midway into the flight a disaster occurs your plane loses power and yeah not a good time for anyone as you hurtle towards the ground surviving the crash though the doctor is then nowhere to be found so you must now set out as will to kind of like well figure out how to survive first of all but also track Astrid down now a heads up here the story is yet to be completed here we get episodes one two and three with episodes four and five planned for future release as free DLC they've been working on this game now for years constantly patching and updating it episode Episode 4 it was originally intended for a December 2020 release but understandably so Covid and work from home has led to delays into 2021. Fantastic story so far though and I can't wait to see where things go next. Episodic as a term as well may put some of you off thinking oh it's super short. I'd say this like episode 1, 2 and 3 combined you'll easily get 15 hours of gameplay if not more. It really though does come down to how much you want to go ahead and explore and that difficulty option. I will say here as well though just know you know winter mute the story it's also a great entry point for those that are new to the survival idea as it's going to take it that little bit easier on you. So gameplay on the long dark is a first person survival experience and to my knowledge only the second one on the console. Off the top of my head I can only think of the disaster that is Ark. Here though playing as your survivor if you've played the genre before it should not surprise you really. It culminates in a few mechanics so you gotta scavenge literally everything you see, look after your health and well-being and then of course explore. Here with the long dark we are monitoring body temperature, your energy level, your first, how hungry you are and then your health as well. Also alongside this you can get like a ton of afflictions that can do a ton of damage to you from things like sprained ankles to cuts and wounds. To look after yourself though basically expect to be finding items, crafting and then fending off the wildlife because there's more than a few animals that definitely want to eat you. Set in such a cold landscape though you quickly want to learn how to build fires that would be my starting point. Now if any of these meters do hit zero expect for death to be knocking your door swiftly. Thankfully though with so many mechanics and inventory items it would have been very easy to screw up the controls and they absolutely deliver. While it features the traditional you know menus which has everything from your stats to your your items to your map. There's also a handy quick dial accessible by holding down the left trigger. It's simple but it works extremely well. Likewise you can flip through essential items like weapons and lights with a touch of the d-pad. The only other things then that come into the gameplay you got a sprint meter for energy, a duck mechanic, some serious inventory management because you do have a weight limit you need to stick within and then finally most surprisingly actually gyro controls. You can flip these between being on constantly or aiming only. I've always played games with aiming only and they do definitely work but they're not the smoothest honestly feeling a little too sensitive for their own good. That said though in the 12 or so hours I've put into this world to test out the switch build, I'm actually currently wrapping up episode 3 right now, I've pulled out my gun and aimed it maybe 3 or 4 times. Do not come here for combat that is always a final resort. So when it comes to modes then the story and its episodic style is fun with some great characters to meet and I will say an intriguing storyline but that really is as I say not for the survival heart. Ardent. Survivalists you want to come here for survival mode. Here you're thrown into the wild and the only goal is to yeah survive the only ending being well death. 
this is by far the most interesting way to play no guidance nothing like that just you against the world and it is incredible for those that still like to have some sort of goal i will say it even has built-in achievements and one of those is to survive 500 days that is a hell of a challenge right there it even actually has four preset difficulty options as well and a custom one where you can choose through like this extensive list of options from the day and night cycle to the level of animals to the rate you'll start to feel the burden of the day on you the only other mode then challenges these are kind of like short burst experiences they last somewhere in the region of two to three hours and you get seven to work through a varying difficulty these were actually better than i expected and they provide for a nice distraction when you're like in the mood for something maybe a tiny bit more linear so problems on the gameplay front i had a few moments when i couldn't interact with something that i needed to and that's a sensitivity issue more than anything items they are frequently like you know tiny and if you're not perfect with that aim it's not gonna work it led to a few moments where i was sure I was at the right location so I took a few steps away went back and then I got it just right they could do with expanding the size of you know the sensitivity area around some of these items you need to interact with likewise this isn't really a problem but more a truth of the genre you need to learn this world's rules early on it will say for example collect wood and you can see tree trunks around you you can see houses that are made of wood you can see wood literally lying on the floor but you can't take from them to survive in this world basically you need to learn the way it works and what it you know expects from you sometimes that won't always make complete sense the last issue load times they ain't the longest but they ain't the shortest either let's put it that way on the xbox i kind of got used to these quick fire loads jumping between the indoors and outdoors here you're going to be hit with load screens up to around the 15 second mark not a huge deal but they can break the immersion of this like snow covered world that is for sure i wish they weren't here but it's a compromise no doubt of getting this huge world onto the switch and i think they handled it fairly well outside of that though i adore this gameplay loop it's addictive the free modes make for some nice variety they seem to have fixed the bugs that I experienced over on the xbox uh, one of the bugs over there for some reason when you finished episode one episode two just wouldn't kick in for some reason here not a single problem with that so yeah this is really good stuff performance then and for the most part we are somewhere lying between 25 and 30 frames per second normally i did tend to see like the 28 mark while it is clearly favorable i gotta say i didn't really notice this like fluctuation this isn't a first person shooter a very somber kind of gameplay loop with intensity not generated from action but just kind of what's happening around you. So I actually see no problem with where it stands. Playing it, honestly, I was questioning whether it was a locked 30 because for the most part, it did feel that way. With this scale, it's impressive when you take a look at something like Ark that was an absolute disaster on the frame rate front. So graphically speaking, then it's a beautiful game that's seen a downgrade on the Switch. There is no question about it. Not a bad looking game at all, but if you put this side by side with, let's say, Xbox or PC and you're for sure gonna see it. Where those had, you know, a great level of detail to everything, the Switch build seems to have paid a key focus on what we will spend the most time in, the wilderness itself. The snow-covered landscapes, they still look great, the world intriguing. It's just when you get up close, you'll see the low detail textures and almost like flat variations they've like used here. Think like searching cabinets and locations, just anything basically indoors more than anything. It's particularly noticeable in the opening of episode one, though you're in like a hangar with your plane. I was a little bit at this point like this could be rough but thankfully once the game opened up i saw a huge leap in quality the thing that the long dark has going for it though it's the style it goes for it's like a cartoon like water painting style it's basically firewatch with snow so it was never the most detailed to begin with here on the switch it's kind of leaning into that even more does it impact the game though and the experience? Not really, honestly. You'll see the occasional bit of popping and the weather, like storms, they'll lose some of their impact, but it never stopped me from looking over, you know, wide open vistas and just kind of being stunned at what my Switch was outputting. Here, they've not only, you know, kept the graphics to a decent level, but not cut anything out of the game. So respect for this port. It's an impressive job where, yes, the cutbacks are noticeable, but if that's what had to be done to get it onto the console, I am more than okay with that. Audio then and stunning. I love it. It's the classic if you can play with headphones, I absolutely suggest you do. Not only because they capture wilderness perfectly, but moments like wolves howling, they use the 3D space around you perfectly. And the audio would actually give you clues to the direction you should be facing if you don't want to end up as lunch. 
Likewise, the audio just brings these characters to life in the episodes with some great voice acting. When you go with a more cartoon-like style, there's for sure a risk of losing that connection with the characters, an important thing for a survival experience. But here they add the humanity to these folks that you'll be meeting along the way. While it's minimal then as well, some truly stunning music from the moments in the wild to the opening cutscenes in the story, where folk-like music you know, backs the moment-to-moment -moment plot. Incredible work and another soundtrack I suggest you check out. So overall, The Long Dark for me just took the crown for the survival genre on the Switch. Not that we have a huge selection out there in the genre, to be honest. We tend to see games though like Don't Starve and The Flame in the Flood. Now those both great games, but for me, there's something about a first person take on the genre that just, you know, works best. It feels very different and more immersive. While there is clear areas that they cut back in, like the graphics and, the, you know, especially the textures, the loading screens, it all makes sense given this game's scale. And for me, it never really took away from the great game that it is. Weirdly as well, like I say, the low detail actually almost plays pretty well into the overall style of the game that it always went for. You can easily sink hundreds of hours into this one, and I'm sure though many of you will. Today I'm going to be giving The Long Dark a great 8 out of 10. There's some areas where it needs work, but if you're a fan of the idea, check it out, but don't come here as I say for the story. Use that as a guide, use that as a starting point before you jump into the wide open. That is where the real entertainment is. With that, a shout out to the patrons who are going above and beyond to support Switch Core and it helps more than you know, so thank you all so much. If you want to check that out for yourself, I've linked it down in the description below. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here. Join our growing family and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.